Robbie, you want to start? Yeah. Uh, hey, Liam. Uh, I mean, uh, postseason of some sort still very much in play for you guys. Uh, uh, how important is it to you guys to be able to, you know, keep playing after that SEC tournament in, in some form or fashion? Uh, I think it's very important. I mean, uh, you know, obviously every, the goal is to make the NCAA tournament, and, you know, we have every intention of going down there and winning five. That's tough to do, but you know, you want you want to play in a postseason tournament in college basketball, regardless of what it is. Like I, I've only played in one postseason ter- like tournament outside of like the conference tournaments in my career, and that was the CIT, and that was still a lot of fun. So I mean, to play in postseason is great to get experience for your younger guys, and just uh, as an experience as a veteran, just to go through that with your team. Uh, so you know, this would be. You know, there there's a good chance, obviously, that you're going to be playing back to back days or back to back to back. You know, where do you think you're at in terms of being able to, um, you know, do you think they're going to manage you in terms of that? Uh, do you think you can play, you know, three days in a row um, coming off the foot or, you know, where are you at on that? Uh, no, I don't think there's any restrictions on me or not that I'm aware of. Uh, I'm, I'm full go. I mean, you know. I mean, you're playing every day, so I mean, you're not, you're not, you know, you're not pulling punches. You, you got to play to win each one. You, you know, there's not double elimination or anything like that. So I mean, I'm, I'm ready to go for the whole week. Justin, hey Liam, I know I don't think you played last time. Um, you guys played Georgia twice already. It can be pretty challenging to beat a team three got three times in a season, I guess, considering you really know what they want to do. They know what you want to do. Um, when you guys have been talking about this matchup, what have kind of been the keys in terms of containing Georgia? Uh, yeah, it, we start with exactly that. Like, you know, it's tough to be a team three times. Like it, everyone in college basketball kind of knows that, you know, it's just always tough to get that third win for whatever reason. So, I mean, a, a lot of it just comes down to being us, like uh, sticking to our offense and defensive principles. And, if you know, if we execute that and, you know, we don't, you know, we're not lax going into the game. We're not, you know, letting them kind of get into their stuff. Like, you know, we feel pretty confident that, we, you know, we can do what we did the last two times. Chris Harris? Hey, Liam, I was just curious, what would you say this team's identity is right now over the last week and a half or so? It's kind of been all over the map of not being able to close out games and then you did in the final one. What would what would you say you guys are rallying around right now? Yeah, uh, as far as our identity, I, I mean, I think it's a little tough for me to fully say because, you know, I, I've joined a little bit later. But I, what I can say is this team always plays hard. Like, I mean, the one thing, like, you can never question with anyone out there is that they're not, like, that they're – not giving you their 110 percent effort like i mean they're always going to the last minute like not everything might be perfect but i i think we're always the hardest playing team out there david white hey liam uh what is how is rodney chapman doing and what do you expect from him is he available for the sec tournament uh i i don't know the full story with rodney you'd have to ask him that but, I mean, if we can have him back for the SEC tournament, I mean, that's huge. I mean, I, I don't know what the record is with him, but, uh, I mean, it's it's pretty good. I mean, he's an incredible player. I played against him when I was at Drake and he was at Dayton. And, you know, he gave our guards trouble there. So, I mean, just having him out there is just super valuable uh, offensively and defensively. Jerry? Yeah, Liam, I, I cover Kentucky, by the way, so you know who you're talking to. Uh uh, you guys could play Kentucky on Friday if you advance. And I'm wondering, uh, Oscar Shibwe, with all the rebounding and scoring and all of that, he's also leading the team in steals. And I wondered, as a big guy, what if it, usually that's a guard or a wing guy. I wonder what it says to you, if anything, that a big guy could be leading his team in steals. Uh, I mean, I think it just says he's aggressive on defense. I mean, like, steals I like that's impressive like I mean I've never led the team in steals or anything like that but I mean I, I don't think too much of it I mean your goal as an offensive player is to just never let the guy get the ball and steal it from you so I mean that's just kind of what you take away from that there's no real game plan for that that's more of just a pride thing and I wondered too if you, you I remember on an earlier teleconference you said uh, as a big 10 player you played against a lot of big guys big guys that were challenging I'm wondering how Oscar fits in. You know what I mean? How, how, how does he stack up with what you're used to? 
yeah, I mean, he's a really talented player. Like, there's no taking away from that. I mean, I went against some really, uh, really versatile offensive guys in the, the Big Ten, not saying Oscar isn't, but I, like Luca Garza, I mean, you had to chase him around the three-point line. Like, I mean, he was probably the most skilled offensive player I've played. I'd say Kofi Coburn was the most physically imposing, dominant player. You also have Hunter Dickinson, Trevion Williams, Zach Eady. Like, there's just a lot of different variations. I mean, he fits right in there. I mean, he does. He, he he's probably the best rebounder I've seen. I mean, he averages what like 15 rebounds a game. So I mean, he's definitely impressive, just in a different way that everyone is. Everyone's a different player. Thanks. Good luck. Thank you, Robbie. Uh, hey, Liam. On the um, you know, I just remembered on the broadcast for uh, the last game, they said that um, Coach Stackhouse said that you're coming back for next season. Um, you know, is that finalized? And and what played into that decision for you, if it, if it is pretty much done? Yeah, I mean, as far as next season goes, I mean, like, you know, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, right now, though, I'm really just focused on the SEC tournament and then discussing, like, all that further in detail once the season's over. But right now, I'm just kind of focused on finishing up this season strong. All good, thank you. Jerry, do you have another one? No, I'm good, thank you. Okay. Anyone else? David, I've got okay. one. Go ahead, David. Um, Liam, how complete a player do you think you are now? Do you feel like you're back to where you were last year as far as you know the three big numbers, the points, rebounds, and blocks? Do you feel like you're kind of close to where you want to be? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think I'm getting there. I mean, I, I still I, – I personally think, like, I mean, maybe it's just, you know, I'm holding myself to a standard, but I, I don't think I'm at where I can be. I I, I think uh, my numbers from last year are starting to get similar as far as field goal percentage and stuff. But, I, I, I mean, I, I missed about a year of skill development and stuff, so I feel like I'm still trying to get back to that and, like, you know, getting a rhythm and a – uh, rhythm with the offense still a little bit because I am new to this program. So, I mean, I think there's a lot more that I can do, but right now I'm just kind of just trying to play really hard and just uh, give whatever I can to the team. That kind of, you know, unique situation where you could be playing multiple games, you know, in a row, back to back to back days or whatever. Um, Liam said that, that he doesn't have any limitations in terms of that, you know, if Rodney plays, would that be, you know, would you try to limit him in some way? What are the challenges of playing, you know, potentially multiple games back to back? Yeah, I mean, we have to be smart with that. Uh, obviously, he hadn't had a lot of, uh, you know, actual game time in a while. I think Liam is fine. He's starting to get into, uh, you know, some game shape. Probably still not the, the best that he'll be. Hopefully, he'll continue to improve that as the, you know, as the tournament goes on and we have an opportunity to play more games. Um, but, um, no, you know, Rodney's, you know, it's, it's, Excited about getting in, you know, seeing where he's at, getting him into a little workout today. We won't have a big workout today, but we we will, um, you know, get up and down a little bit, uh, non-contact, uh, where he can get some dummy offense and different things like that this week. And then tomorrow we'll have more of a, a live pra practice as well. Liam tweaked his ankle just a little bit, nothing serious on uh, at Ole Miss. But, uh, again, a light day for him and, and get everybody back back to working tomorrow. Is Rodney, do you think he'll be like game time decision type of deal? Yeah, I mean, I think he's committed to play. He know that this is it for him. So, I mean, I think he's, uh, you know, six years senior and you know, all that stuff. So, he doesn't you know, have an opportunity to do anything else. He's going to let it all hang out. So, we have all of the, you know, the ace bandages and all of the, you know, the creams, the cream of Jesus to a sore bean junior. Y'all boys don't know nothing about that, but that's that, that that's that old school stuff we used to have. Y'all got all of the, the, the new pride, the bodies and all that bio freeze and all that stuff now, but now we, we're going to do all we can to try to get him loose, get him stretched out and hopefully he can come in and help us, man. Just, you know, I think, I don't even know, maybe a possibility of just bringing him off, um, you know, off the bench just to, you know, so he can stay on the bike, get warm, do all those things and just come in and, and, and really, um, you know, kind of save him for later in the games if we don't have to put so much pressure on him, so much onus on him at the beginning of the game. But nothing's, you know, concrete there yet, but um, it's just something I'm thinking about. And, uh, Liam, earlier, just kind of what you guys have gone through the ups and downs of the last week and a half or so, what, what do you think uh, this team, where do you think it is mindset-wise right now uh, heading into a tournament where you got to rip off a few wins and a few? 
Yeah, I think we're in a good spot, man, just from the standpoint that we know that we've uh, had some some great opportunities that we you know, didn't handle well down the stretch ourselves and it could easily be in a different situation. I mean, I think, you know, if you think of not only the earlier games that we had opportunity to win, but just those particular three in a row there um, that, you know, just you know, changes our, you know, where we are just tremendously. I mean, when you start talking about close to 18, almost 20 wins, um, that's you know that, that's a different conversation for you know for postseason and different things like that, especially you know um, in our league and how tough it's been this year. Um, but I, I just think for us, it's just just about focusing on the on on the stuff within the game. You know, not getting so much into you know the the next game or the next opponent, but just trying to you know handle our business on a possession to possession uh, you know basis. Just you know screening when it's your opportunity to set a screen. Um, that's where we got to get better at. You know, I thought we were really stingy defensively late in the game. That's really what preserved the game for us because we didn't, you know, we didn't make our free throws. We didn't, you know, make our open shots. We, um, but what we did do was really defend well and made it made it tough for them. Even the the, the, the three that you know, they they made late was was heavily contested and um, and we rebounded the ball well. So I think those are those are you know the things that we're coming into practice coming in this week, man. Just kind of one possession at a time. Work your minutes. Play hard. Um, if you get tired, get a tire signal. We got guys that, that that we trust behind you to give you a few minutes. And uh, but again, we we're gonna go with our older guys. We're gonna go with our guys that um, have been around, and and you know, that, that's the hierarchy around here. Yeah, we played a lot of guy, guys this year. I think that we give them an opportunity that if we need them that they've had some game action, but this is a time where you count on your older guys, the guys that's been around and, and try to go out and get every game you can get. Is there anything you can do as a coach to help your players have confidence at the free throw line? Uh, man, I wish, man, I was going to ask you that. You know, <laughs> if there's any secrets that you got, man, I, mean, I don't know. I mean, I just try to... I was trying everything on the old Miss game, right? I was, you know, I, I went down. I was like, maybe me standing up is doing too wrong. I went down on, you know, just kind of squatted down. Maybe I, if I hide from them, they don't feel me there. That didn't work either. So maybe I, I'm gonna do something. Uh, maybe maybe some couple pointers or something. I can tell them right before they shoot it. But man, I, I don't know. We hadn't, uh, hadn't hadn't been good there, you know. Especially, I mean, if, uh, I thought somebody said it. I can't remember who it was right now. Or oh, maybe I think it was Coach Barnes at Tennessee. He's like a front, missing the front end of a run one and one. It's like a turnover, right? It, it really is. I mean, it really um, it's deflating, you know, because you, you you work you know worked hard to make probably get to the bonus, and now you you know run some offense or whatever, and maybe they foul you with you know when they act of shooting this opportunity to get some separation, um, and uh, we, we we left some left them left the door open, and we've done that a number of times this year, but maybe. Maybe this is where we, we flipped the from because we, we got guys that are capable of making them. We got guys that are, you know, you know, capable of stepping up and taking and have made big shots for us. Um, but you know, maybe it's just um, you know, something that, that that we turned the corner on and uh, hopefully uh today. I'm trying to work on something with uh, Oscar Shibwe and He's leading the team in scoring and, and rebounding, of course, but he's also leading in steals. And I wonder what that says, if anything, about a big man. Usually that's a guard or a perimeter player that a big man's leading in steals. No, I mean, I thought we talked about this a week or so ago when you asked me about that. I mean, he does a good job of denying the elbows and, you know, he, he does a good job of three-quarter in the post. I mean, that's how he gets steals. You know, ain't nothing changed since the last time I said that a week or so ago. And, and how is your team, you know, where are you guys at, do you think, right now, going into the SEC tournament? Yeah, we're in there. We're everybody. We're all even right now. Nothing matters. I mean, this is a new season. So the first season is over. You know, we finished it as well as we could, 15, 15, you know, you know, the accomplishment for us, not the accomplishment that we feel that we should should be at. You know, I, I feel like we're five games, five or six games better than, than what our record shows. I honestly feel that and, and somewhat disappointed about that. But uh, it is what it is. So now we, you know, none of that matters. We got the seed that we, that we wanted. We, we didn't um, wish to hope to play on Wednesday. I mean, that's kind of an accomplishment of, of not playing on the first day. But, you know, we are. And for us, it's not the worst thing. It gives us an opportunity to, to play more games and, and add to 
uh, a resume that's still you know, being considered for a uh, possible postseason opportunity. So, you know, we feel good about where we are, and that's all, all we're focusing on is, is us, not not anybody else. I mean, yes, yeah, possibility we could see, um, you know, who's who is Alabama after us, and maybe Kentucky after that. But we'll deal with that when we when we get to that. We, we focus on Georgia, and, and that's where our mindset needs to be right now. Uh, they were playing at the same time as you guys, uh, but um, you know, did you get a chance to? catch any of the end, you know, since they started an hour later, the UNC Duke game. I'm just curious. You're, I'm sure you were excited about the outcome. Uh, your thoughts on, you know, just uh, it must be strange to see Coach K, you know, kind of in his last season, in his last home game. Yeah, I mean, I, I got tremendous respect for Coach K and what he's been able to accomplish, man. You know, like I said before, it's hard for guys to accomplish things for to have a 10 year run and for you to do that uh, multiple times. I mean, 42 years, unbelievable accomplishment, unbelievable uh, leader, uh, unbelievable winner. Uh, but at the same time, we still hate him, right? You know, it's, and, we're, and, we're, and we're super glad to spoil the party. Uh, and I, would, I, I was able to get back to the locker room and um, catch the last few minutes of that, really the, you know, how the guys performed at the end of the game, super happy for Hubert. And what he's been able to accomplish, he's, uh, you know, he's had, you know, the ups and downs this year. Again, a lot of, you know, doubters and naysayers. And that's, you know, at the end of the day, he's won 20 plus wins. Uh, probably got the ACC Player of the Year um, this year in in Baycott. And um, you know, so I, yeah, we, 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 I didn't I didn't lose any sleep over that. Um, Coach Case had, you know, and, and and he had a temper tantrum at the end. <laughs> So, so we must have really got under them skin. So that, that that's the way a Carolina Duke rivalry is supposed to end. Yeah. So, so we got assistants not shaking hands, and those are good. You know, those dudes are Carowell and all those guys. Uh, uh, man, pretty, pretty pretty good dudes. But it just shows you how that 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 rivalry really means something. They were upset, and um, you know we, you know, again, like I say, I never lost over there. So I, I, I don't know what it what it feels like. I never lost to Duke. Period. So. Um, I can I can toot my nose up a little bit more at him, but still, but you know, enough of that, man. Anchor down. <laughs> Beating a team a third time, you know how hard that is. Like, what what makes it so hard? And do y'all prepare any differently for this? For this, say that game? again now. What? Um, beating a team a third time, uh, you know how tough that is. But uh, do you prepare differently for that? And why is it so hard to beat a team three times? Well, no, I mean, I think we. Uh, it's, it's, it's any time because especially with us, you know, right. You know, hopefully that works in our favor. You know, we, we continue to, to, to get down the road and maybe see that, that team in blue, you know, that this it, it falls in our favor. It's hard to, but again, I think it's the personnel. It's a little different now than, than the times that we played um, guys that were, that played in that game. Um, you know, uh, like Jermaine Mann, he was, you know, in our rotation when we played him there. You know, he's still banged up and, and, and injured. So he's not figured to be into the mix. We got Liam now. Uh, I think Rodney might have missed one of those games too. So it's just a different line. We don't know, you know, know exactly what their um, guys who maybe emerged uh, and uh, and playing more of a prominent role. You know, that, that's why we kind of lock into the scout report, try to take the last few games, see who's in and out, who's out. But but again, at this point, teams are who they are. They're, they're running the stuff that they feel most comfortable with. And now it's just our job to try to lock into them and and take those things away, which I feel like like, like we can. It's just a, a matter of we we uh, we do it, right? We, we know what to do. Now let's just go out there and do it. Um, and, um, and, and But, I, but I, I do feel good about that, you know, that we've had some success. Maybe guys come in with a little bit more confidence that, that we did, but hopefully not overconfident to understand that we had that, that we can't skip steps. We still need to um, approach it on a possession by possession basis.